Hey traders, Parker here with another indicator. Today I'll be introducing you to my uh, pivot indicator. And if you look at it, it works out pretty good. For the most part, it finds those highs and those lows or where a stock is pivoted from. If we come over here, you can see how the SPY is actually holding these lows pretty well. Even though it dropped below and it broke this pivot, as you can see, it's no longer expanding like the other ones are. Same situation with this one. Anytime these pivot areas of pivot high, pivot low is broken, the indicator or the box will go away. As you can see right here, these all were broken and it fell into these uh, fell into these areas back here. The stock went back up and I need to cut off the, uh, well, for the most part, what you're seeing these uh, protruding boxes are the fresh boxes but the actual boxes uh, like these right here are going to go away same situation here you can see there's two boxes here this is the freshest box this is the freshest uh freshest pivot as well and it hasn't it takes a certain amount of bars for it to find this next pivot right now i have this one set on 12. So it's probably going to it, it usually takes about 12 to 6 bars for it to find another pivot high, pivot low. So this isn't going to be real time like I would like it to be, but it does work effectively. For the most point, what you're looking for is retracement back to these areas. And you can see up here how this stock, this uh, S&P 500 retraced to this area and it actually bounced. As you can see as well, just because the low breaks below it, it's not going to go away. What the way I designed this indicator is the average of the high low close divided by three. That average needs to break below the low or the high for those uh, for the boxes to go away. This is not uh, a supply and demand indicator. It's a pivot indicator that finds areas of possible support resistance. And you can look right here, it's pushed out a few because it's adjusting for this high right here. Same situation here. They're just not going to appear like that. What they're going to do is they're going to look for those, uh, the highs, and it's going to count those boxes and then, it'll, and then it'll adjust itself. So this is on a higher time period. Uh, let's go. And this is what it looks like over how many... I think it's five years over a five year period and you can see how even during the uh, pandemic it found this area right here the stock actually pushed uh not pushed down but paused and i may have said something in one of my previous videos where i saw you know this is really just gappy and you know it's the fed uh or the um anyway they were stopping the stock halting the stock down as the s p 500 fell with during a pandemic and you can look at each one of these areas, the stock pause, pause, you know, it trickled all the way down, but it paused in these areas, uh, found this uh, support area right here and pushed above, uh, made another high, found this support area right here and uh, proceeded upward. And like I said, you're going to use this as a retracement indicator and you're basically looking for a uh, the stock to possibly re go back into these areas, just like here, even though it broke this above, it actually uses as support as well until the next one was found as well. And that's one of the reasons why I left those main boxes or those fresh boxes in there instead of just uh, doing away with them completely. And like I said, this is on a higher time period. We can go to an even higher time period, a uh, three year week and look at it like this. And I'm probably going to just push this up to 10 years. And you can see how this indicator has worked out. And even during a pandemic, it found these two pivots right here. And you can see how the, the S&P 500 actually turned around and pushed up above. Even now, today, it's found this, well, this pivot, made this pivot right here uh, back on June. That's what you've been hearing on the uh, Yahoo business and the uh, CNBC, and, you know, all these uh, uh, business channels, you know, hoping that the S&P 500 will hold these June lows. And for the most part, it has held there and it's trying to push above. Uh, I drop it back down to a year. And actually, I need to do go to three year. 
and this is where we are. It's actually holding those June lows back uh, back here, but it's actually holding the lows from previously as well. So you can look right there. That's December 20th, D December 31st, uh, tw uh, 20, yeah, the year 20. <laughs> but it's holding those lows for the most part. It's trying to pivot back around. So let's go to a lower time period. So we'll do 30 day hour. And we can look at what's going on now. You can see how when it breached those breaches period, you still had this uh, fresh uh, resistance area right here. And the stock actually used that resistance area as a support. If you've been watching my videos, you know I like to say that old res uh, and cooling refer to and cooling. But she said old resistance becomes new support and new old support once breach becomes new resistance. And right now, this is what we're dealing with uh, on an hourly basis. I'm hoping that it doesn't come back down here, but it could pivot down there. But like I said, I have a set for 12. And you can use either the wicks or the bodies. Uh, you can hide the main cloud. You can hide the you can hide the main line, lines, which will just go across with the main clouds. You can hide the lines that actually go with the, all the clouds. And you can hide the... Uh, cloud as well these uh past clouds or these past pivots and if you don't like any of the colors that i've chosen you can come down here and you can change any of these colors you can change anything that you want so this thing is fully customizable and we can change this to eight i'm just using a fibonacci number just pushing it back to eight and see what we get as well and what you're going to get is more clouds and you get more uh pivot points because now it's tracking the pivot points of eight and i put it on this uh it's on the hourly so we'll push it down to say uh 30 day 15 and this is what we're now looking at and one of the other things i didn't have the uh the higher low or the of the cloud uh go up to the close or the um uh, or the open or the body of the cloud because I wanted it. I didn't want this. You didn't, you don't want this uh, long wick, but even though it created one, it, it didn't go all the way up there and just shatter the whole entire thing. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't do that. But for the most point, you know, it's holding these lows. It's holding this low from here at this point right here. This is on a 15 minute and the spy is pushing back above. So we can drop it down to a five minute. I still have it set for eight. So uh, five times eight is 40. So this is 40 minutes worth of data. And you can see right here, um, the spy actually did come all the way down here. And it's right now, it's fighting with these pivots that it created earlier. And you can see this one big wick right there. And that's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily like using the spy or using this indicator on the spy. And I'm going to put my stuff back, uh, my drawings back, and I'm going to go to the uh, futures. S&P 500 futures, uh, E-mini futures, because this is not going to give me one of those big, long, lower wicks or whatever those wicks are that the spy does. So for the most part, you get a lot more boxes. So you're going to be a lot more noisy, a lot more noise when you're using this uh, indicator as well. If you use it on a lower, uh, lower period or a lower length for your uh, pivots. So I'm going to push it back to 12 just because that's what I like. Whatever you like, you can choose that. Well, for the most part, um, the E-mini e futures, it actually dropped down into each one of these. You know, you had ultra high volume, this yellow candle to push it all the way back down. But it started to pause in these areas and it paused eventually right here on this pivot right here. And it created another pivot pushing out from this area. And now it's pushing back above. It's having trouble with these areas of uh, these pivots or these areas of resistance as well. And you see this is the main main area of resistance, and this is the main area of support right now, until it creates a new uh, fresh one. 
but for the most part this is the indicator if you're interested in the indicator please look in look in the link in the description and this is just uh be my pivot indicator and one of the ways that i use this indicator i actually pair with another indicator that i've created and i call it my channel indicator so and they work really well together it's called uh cw parker 23's channel system i make a separate video on this but this is how i use it but uh let me cut off those uh bubbles so we can see everything today only and let's see what we have and it didn't cut off all the targeting bubbles so let me cut give me a moment let me cut off all those targeting bubbles uh target bubbles no uh target lines yeah, I'm gonna hide those and that should do it. Okay, so that get rid of the whole targeting system for this indicator for the, the my channel system. But for the most part, you can see how these two will work effectively together. This blue line is just the uh, average or midpoint of the channel, and you get these red dots when uh, the stock makes a lower high and lower low and you get these green dots when a stock makes a higher high and a higher low when the channel itself is broken you actually with this line right here would be broken so there's no not showing any type of resistance or anything but when the channel itself is in play it uh stay down there you can see how this stock once you start making lower lows that uh lower channel this cyan line was broken But you can see right here how this everything works together. The IB stands for um, in 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 body, inward body, inside body. So this high and this low is inside this high and low. Uh, EG, uh, the green EG stands for engulfing. So this body engulfs this body. Uh, this uh, red NG, this orange NG, saying that this body engulfs the previous body. And BU just a breakup candle, and it should have a breakdown candle somewhere around here too. So there we go, BD breakdown candle. And this cloud or this uh, pink cloud and this cyan cloud is is uh, pushing to the future. So it kind of works like Ichimoku. But like I said, I'm not going to go into great detail with this indicator because I'm going to do a separate video on it. But this is one of the indicators that, I mean, this is how I pair these two together because they're based off of the same things. Even these pivots are based off of this channel indicator. But for the most part, this will be the end of the video. I hope the, I hope everything I said and has helped and uh, helped you and uh, brought you to a new understanding of this pivot indicator it's not a supply and demand indicator it's a pivot indicator so let me get rid of the channel system and here's our pivots back in play without the channel system it's a lot cleaner without the channel system but for the most part uh this is it i will go to one more stock so let's say tesla's having a rough day so let's just go to Tesla. And if you do decide to get this indicator, it uses a lot of resources uh, for your computer. So it will slow it down. But if you have a lot of RAM, you won't have to worry about that. But for the most part, you can see Tesla, it broke through all of these uh, pivots right here. It paused at this one right here but this is ultra high volume and then still high volume down there but it came to this indecision area where it tried to push back above but it just basically just collapsed but right now you can see it's struggling with this pivot area from this candle right here where it's trying to break above and it found these areas of support so we'll go look at tesla uh blue i'll go look at that but uh, we're going to look at Tesla on a three year and see what it's dealing with or where it could possibly go down to. And I see how this set. Yeah, I, no, I have it set on eight. Okay, did that? 
Yeah, it's set to 12 now. Okay. For the most part, you can see how Tesla, it found this area of support and it couldn't hold it. If ultra high volume brought it down, it gapped down below. And uh, would you say, no, nah, it's not dealing with any of these previous areas of uh, resistance, but it could possibly come back down to this 224 area and find an area of support. Well, it looks like it created a lot of uh, pivots down here or a lot of support areas down there, at least from this one, this one, and this one. So that's Tesla. We can go look at uh, GME. A lot of people still looking at GameStock, and GameStock is still holding in the 20s, you know, which surprised a lot of people. At least it surprised me. But you can see how it found these areas of support, and it still has these three areas of support down here that GameStop could possibly push back into. Same situation here. These areas of support, and it has this uh, fresh resistance area right here. So we will go to AMC. Uh, if you remember my previous video, I was talking about how uh, this is all uh, diverged, bullish divergence going through here. But you can actually see these areas of uh, where the stock has pivoted in the, in the past. And it actually used these areas of support. And then it finally rebounded uh, or went back up. But it's below this last area of, uh, of support or where the stock had pivoted. So you can say in one sense, this is now acting as resistance, but um, it give it a few more bars and this should plot out a new area of support or will plot out another area of support down here. But you can see how the stock is trying to hold up, but even under ultra high volume, it still can push back up, uh, into this area. So right now it's acting as resistance. Uh, NQ, the NASDAQ 100, futures, and this is what the future NASDAQ 100 futures look like with this indicator. So it broke this one. So it's really saying it didn't break any of these areas. The average of the high, low, close didn't breach any of these levels. And it's actually pulling these levels back from September 2220. It's where uh, the NASDAQ 100 is holding on to. Uh, XLE. I haven't updated those fields either. This is the energy ETF. And it's pushing back above as well. But it may get hit with this pivot right here. This resistance area right here from these two uh, candles. But it's real gappy. So for the most part, this is going to be the end of the video. Uh, it works on, uh, let me take it down to the lower one minute as well. So it works on all time frames. There is one drawback or a caveat with this indicator. It requires a certain amount of bars. So it requires up to 300 and something bars for it to actually work. If it doesn't have those bars, it's going to give you an error. Uh, what's the XLA? Uh, XLA. Uh, no. Uh, I'm trying to remember what stock. I, I know it showed it to me on Snow. It gave me an error when I was looking at snow and think it's when it was just taking its time. But you can look at snow. It doesn't get a whole bunch of volume, but it's still a volatile stock. And let's go to I, this stock hasn't been around for three years. So I'm just going to get rid of all, all this stuff because I'm not even really looking at this stock anymore. But I probably will. I probably should have because I was actually in this stock somewhere around 130, but I sold it 
too early, obviously. But for the most part, you can see how these boxes are not really working back here because it, it requires a certain amount of bars. Uh, yeah, it's not enough available. Uh, not enough data is available to view the rest of the study. And that's basically what it's showing you right there. Yeah, these lower ones are working, but it's not really working for you. But the actual uh, main boxes are still working, though. So you'll still get those main ones, but it requires a certain amount of bars for this actually works. So you'll probably push it down to, let's see, the four hour. Four hour uh, work pretty good for it. So even if you want to do the four hour on, let's say, 360, let's see what it gives us. It works out okay. I mean, it doesn't give you all that, but for the most part, it gives you everything else on this four hour. And we can see what's going on here. But this is going to be the end of the video. And like I said, I appreciate you guys taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. I hope it helped out. And I hope um, I hope everything helped out. And I, I thank you all for your support. And I wish you all the best. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And God bless.